They went off to the art hall. There were a row of steps leading to the front entrance. The men gladly picked up Marion's stroller and bounded up to the top with her. Helena was a bit frightened, but they didn't spill the baby, and Marion was still asleep despite the flight. They began the stroll through the artwork. There was an enormous amount of work, and from all over the world, they went to look for Gus's work. He had a bronze bust version of his statue of Farragut and a marble bust of Mr. Everett, the president of the New York Bar Association, and a really nice statue of Hiawatha. Helena gushed over it. The figure seemed lost in sorrow. Gus was pleased with their enthusiasm. Thomas had five oils up. His Hiawatha and the serpents was very creepy. Have your Hiawathas met? Helena asked. We should get them together for a party. Thomas's The Mountain of the Holy Cross was majestic. The hot springs of Yellowstone was wonderful and mysterious. The red sunset was very powerful. She was ready to travel out west and see these sights in person. She was envious. It must have been amazing to journey out to these places, she told him. We nearly starved to death on the first trip. I did better on the second trip. I brought my own supplies. They all knew that they'd better see the Lafarge pieces. They would be questioned later by him. Helena didn't care if he questioned her or not, but she went with them. The two mistresses seemed to have bonded and trailed after her and the three men. She wasn't too concerned about being friendly with them. She really didn't expect to ever see them again. Lafarge had seven oils up, his self-portrait and a couple landscapes, and a few still lifes of floral arrangements. They were all masterfully done, of course. They moved on. They found Tom's brother's oils and Tiffany's. There's no oils from Winslow? Helena asked. Richard consulted the program he had picked up as they came in. No, just watercolors. Marion awoke. She was hungry. Helena excused herself and started off for the women's restroom, leaving the stroller with Richard. He followed her with it. Won't you need this? I don't think there will be room for it in the restroom. I'll park it outside. No one will bother with it, Richard said. Where will you be, she asked. We'll stay here until you come out. There was no place to change a diaper in the restroom. She brought Marion back out and changed her in the carriage and then brought the soiled do diaper back inside to wash it out in the toilet. A frowning woman exited. There were no chairs like the women's pavilion restrooms had. So she sat in a stall with the door open and proceeded to unbutton and give her the breast through the slit in her nursing hemis. Marion wasn't happy. Helena brought her to her shoulder and softly sung to her. Another frowning woman left. The baby finally settled into feeding. She felt bad inconveniencing the men and their dates and Richard. She also was annoyed that she was missing the exhibition. They will have probably seen it all by the time she emerged and won't want to stay while she looked. And she was missing their discussions and insights. The restroom was hot and smelly. She was getting sweaty. It was too bad she hadn't looked for a window to open. There was nothing to do but sigh or cry. The older woman looked in on her through the open stall and Helena swallowed her sniffles. Are you all right, she asked. Helena nodded and smiled. Brave girl, the woman whispered. I never got it all when I was young. Another two grumpy women went by. She imagined the gossip later in parlors across America. Marion finally seemed satisfied and she burped her, hoping that she hadn't spit up on her shoulder. She emerged and took a look in the mirror. No major stains anyway. She had worn a cream colored blouse just in case. Her hair was a bit frowsy, but there was nothing to be done there. Richard said he liked it like that. So he gets it. The baby bump was really quite obvious. She did smell though, or perhaps it was the dirty diaper. 
She retrieved it from the stall and threw it in the trash can. Others would just have to deal with it. She felt like she had been in there an hour. She came out and put Marion in the stroller. She wasn't sleeping, but she seemed happy. She handed her a toy to chew on. She wandered around and found no trace of her husband. Had they moved on to the other building? There wasn't really any way to make it down the steps out front without help. She was certain she would spill Marion out. Beginning the tour of the painting, she kept an eye peeled for a familiar face. Richard wouldn't desert her, she hoped. She found Walter Sherla's paintings. She knew him from the Art Students League in New York City. There were a lot of important painters represented. Finally, Richard peeked around the corner at her. She thought she might begin to cry. Have you all finished? Are you ready to go? She said, being brave. He frowned and hugged her. Her voice had cracked, she guessed. You didn't be upset at all, he said. Everyone wanted to wait for you, so we went out so Tom and Gus could have a smoke. The girl suggested we wait. Now she felt like bawling. I was in there forever, I'm sorry. Half an hour, I think. He took her hand. They are right around here. I wanted to be